Hello friends and welcome to Escaping the Mouse with your host, me, Breck Roll. Alright, today we're going to do another episode of Bites and Nibbles with Breck. Today we're going to make beer braised shredded beef sandwiches. This looks really good. Let's look at the ingredients. Now this is something that appeared on my Facebook timeline. I thought, wow, this looks pretty good. I want to, want to try it. So here's the ingredients for this. It's going to be some salt, some pepper, some cayenne pepper, some paprika, some garlic powder, chili powder, onion powder, molasses, oil, beer, Worcestershire sauce, three pounds of a ground uh, chuck, a ground chuck roast, uh, some brown sugar, some crushed tomatoes, some water, and of course uh, some uh, sandwich bread to put it on. Now this recipe is kind of interesting because the recipe actually includes two different versions. There's an instant pot version and there's a Dutch oven version and that kind of caught my attention because as you recall I bought that uh, Dutch oven cast iron pot a while back. Now in reality I'm not going to make the Dutch oven version of it. I'm going to make it in the instant pot because I'm trying to kind of show my mom the versatility of the instant pot and all the things she can do in it. And so I'm going to do that version this time. However, I'll probably try it in the Dutch oven at some other point. Now before I begin, I'm going to prepare all of my ingredients because once things start going, it all happens kind of quick. So I'm going to dice my onions and crush my garlic. I'm going to mix together my dry spices and I'm also going to chop up the, the beef into about two to three inch squares and remove all the fat. So I'll do that first and I'll catch up with you in a minute. All right, a little time has passed. Um, I've chopped up my onion and my garlic and mixed it together. I've chopped up the ground chuck, removed as much of the fat as I could, and I've also mixed together all of the dry spices because all of these things all kind of get processed uh, uh, on quick order. So I wanted to have them ready to go when I'm ready for them. So let's move on to the next step. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my spices and I'm gonna kind of spread it all over the meat Kind of get it all nice and coated in there. And then I've actually got this little plastic lid I'm going to put on top of the of the meat. And I'm going to shake this thing up just to make sure we got a good coating all around. Oh yeah, that looks pretty good. Alright, next thing we're going to do is prepare our Instant Pot. Alright, so I'm going to start by putting my uh, Instant Pot into saute mode. And we're, we're going to pour a little bit of oil in there. It says about a tablespoon. I'm going to probably use a little bit more because I have a big instant pot. And then we're going to pour the beef in there and we are going to brown it. In it goes. All right, we'll come back in this in a few minutes. All right, a couple minutes have gone by. This is looking good. The meat smells fantastic. Holy cow, if this is any indication what it's going to taste like, this is going to be a treat. So next thing I'm going to do now is we're going to take the meat out and put it aside for a minute and then we are going to pour the rest of the oil into the pot and we're going to saute our onions and garlic. Alright, so we're going to put a little bit more oil in here. Once again, uh, it's said about a tablespoon per, uh, per batch, but I got a big instant pot so I'm going to use a little bit more. And then I'm going to add in my onions and my garlic and we're just going to saute that for for a couple minutes here. Uh, it says about five minutes, just until it's soft. Now just for the record, the recipe actually says uh, two cloves of garlic, but I really like garlic, so I'm gonna add a little bit more. But like I said, you can go with what's right for you. All right, a couple minutes have gone by. The onions are looking pretty good and pretty soft. And so now what I'm going to do is I am going to throw in the beer. It's about two cups, which is about one and a half bottles. I guess that means that there's a half a bottle for the cook. And I'm using my uh, Voodoo Ranger India Pale Ale. Uh, yeah, I guess you can probably use whatever you want. The recipe uh, suggests uh, using the spoon to kind of get the brown bits off the side and kind of get everything mixed together. And then we're going to re-add the beef and the tomatoes and the water. So 
So in goes the beef. And then the crushed tomatoes. And about two cups of water. And we're going to kind of mix that all together, get it all kind of mixed up here. Now once I got everything in the pot, I'm going to hit the cancel button to turn off the saute mode. I'm going to put the lid on and secure it. And then I'm going to press the meat or stew button. We're going to set the timer for 70 minutes or an hour and 10 minutes. And we're going to let it do its thing. Turn off the keep warm here because we don't want to keep it warm because we're going to vent as soon as it's done. I'll see you in 70 minutes. In case anyone wondered why a lot of my videos seem to be indoors these days. So just as an update on the tomatoes, the tomatoes actually seem to be going to town pretty well. They're growing really, really well. In fact, I was out here last night and I actually see we got some little baby tomatoes growing here. There's one there, there's one there. There's one way up here. There were several on this plant too, one there. So it looks like we're going to have a nice harvest of tomatoes. They're all doing really well out here. Now the jalapeno peppers, that's a different story. In fact, uh, I don't know how, how well that's going to work at all. Now somebody suggested on the live stream today that maybe the problem is it's rained an awful lot here. And they say jalapenos don't necessarily like that much rain. So I don't know. This is all a learning experience and we'll kind of play it by ear. But tomatoes seem to be going well. So... We'll at least have a good harvest of that. Looking forward to them. And I just looked at the temperature in the pool. It's 85 degrees in there, so we'll definitely be in here today. And as for all the plants in here, they are all doing really well. Everybody seems to be really happy. They've gotten a lot of rain in the last few weeks, so uh, they better be happy. And you remember that funny little plant that was kind of over here in the corner that I decided it was the one thing I was going to keep? Yeah, it's starting to come back and it's even flowering a little bit, so... That was a good call to keep that one. All right, we're done. We're gonna hit the cancel button and we are gonna quick vent. Uh, remember, always keep your finger away from this part when you're quick venting because that's where the hot's coming out. Press the button and out of the way. And when the little pink button dries, the pressure is released. Now you always want to kind of be careful when you lift this thing up because there's going to be always a little condensation. And it's also going to fog up your camera if you're shooting a vlog. So that's two things to worry about. All right, so I've separated the uh, the broth and all of the everything except the meat from the meat, and uh, I'm going to add at this point uh, my molasses, Worcestershire sauce, and uh, brown sugar into the mix, and we're going to simmer on a slow level. Slow, we're going to do a slow simmer for uh, about five minutes just to kind of thicken everything up. And while that's happening, I'm going to shred the beef. So you're actually going to laugh at this because the instructions actually say shred the beef with a fork, but I'm a guy, I do things the easy way if I can, and I don't always read the directions. So I just put the kneading tool on my mixer, and that's doing a really good job uh, uh, shredding up the pork too. So you know what, do whatever you want. If you feel like taking the time with the uh, fork, you can do it that way, but I'm like Tim the Toolman Taylor. I got more power, I'm going to use it. So we got this on a slow simmer now, actually maybe a little bit more than a slow simmer. I'm going to bring reduce the heat a little bit more. I'm also going to prepare some corn on the cob for, uh, for dinner. Now normally I would do corn on cob on the uh, Instant Pot, but since the Instant Pot was used, I'm going to actually go to the old fashioned method and we're just going to use my old fashioned steamer. So I'm boiling some water here for that and uh, we'll let that cook for a few minutes and uh, 
come back to it and see what it looks like. All right, so this is thickened up a little bit, and so now I'm going to go in and just mix in the beef. I'm kind of doing this with one hand here, so forgive me. Got a little bit more in there, but let's just kind of stir it all together here and see what we got. Oh yeah, that looks pretty good, doesn't it? Let's see if we can get the rest of the beef out of that pan here. Hang on a second. All right, now we're cooking. That looks pretty decent, doesn't it? I think my corn is just about done here. Yeah, that looks like corn on the cob. That should be good. Let's turn that off, turn this off. I'm just gonna let this kind of soak for a few minutes while we uh, kind of finish up cooking off the, the corn here. All right, it's time for the all important taste test time. I'll, I'll admit it looks pretty good. Now I've cheated a little bit I've added a little cheese to this because I just thought that would uh, that would improve the situation a little bit. Now the thing actually calls for what they call potato buns. I couldn't find actual potato buns, so these are actually potato hot dog buns. But uh, you know, use what you can use. Uh, but this is what I got, and honestly, it looks pretty good. Yeah, really good. Um, might even be good with a little barbecue sauce on it. Who knows? Got good flavor though, you can taste everything in there. Um, it, it'll make a good meal, so definitely recommend this. Try this if you want. Um, as I mentioned before, the, uh, one of the things that kind of caught my attention about this was that there was both an Instant Pot version and a Dutch oven version. I'm gonna post both, both versions of the recipe in the description below, so try which one ever one you want. But this turned out good, and I think this, I was something, this is something I would prepare again. So I think that's all that I have for today. Thank you as always for watching, and I'll see you next time on Escaping the Mouse. Bon appetit.